Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I will be talking about multiple strokes. There are two key scenarios we will be using multiple strokes. The first one is when designing focus states such as this button and this focus state is essentially that blue ring that wraps around the button which indicates to users that use keyboards to navigate which interactive component they are hovering over. And Secondly, if someone just wants to create a crazy design with multiple strokes for whatever reason, we can also do that too. So let's jump into it. So let's start by making a frame. I'm just going to use the frame tool at the top, which is the shortcut F. I'm just drawing it into my workspace. And then in my properties panel, I'm going to go to the stroke section and add a stroke using the plus icon. So now I have my single stroke. I'm just going to make it a bit thicker. So make it a 10. And we can see that the plus icon is not grayed out. So you might be thinking you can create multiple strokes. But actually, when you add another stroke, all it does is adds another color line. So the only thing we can change on this secondary stroke is the color, the transparency, and its visibility. We can't change its thickness because both of these strokes are controlled by the same thickness and the same location placement. So we have center, inside, outside. So as an example, let's make this 100%. Oops. And we will just make this this orange color. As you can see, this is on the top. So it's on the topmost layer. But when I hide it, now you can see the black. So that's not necessarily what we want to do. And if I change it to outside, they move both to the outside. My preferred method of making multiple strokes is by using auto layout because of a feature called padding, which enables us to create an even width around any element. So before we can make a stroke, we firstly need to configure our elements for auto layout. So let me just copy and paste this button component. And we know it's a frame because in our layers panel, we can see this hashtag, which indicates a frame component. So with any frame, when you add an order layout, and there are three ways to do that, we can go to the properties panel, order layout, we can press the plus button, or we can right click, add order layout, or shift A is the shortcut. With any frame, when we add an order layout, it configures all of the elements within the frame. So in this instance, nothing really happened because of the way I've set up this button component. However, let me just expand this. Let me just move this around. Let's say your elements is structured in an odd way. And then you add auto layout. So I'm just going to add it through this plus icon. You can see the frame and the elements within readjusted, which is not necessarily what we want. So I'm going to undo with Command Z. What we can do is we can either group the selection or frame the selection again. So for example, if I group it, it's not, no longer treated like a frame, it's treated like a group. So now I can add auto layer and my elements have not moved, which is great. But there's a little hack that we can use that's even better. So let me just go ahead and delete this. And the hack is by creating this into a component. So I'm going to create the component by right clicking, create component. The shortcut is option command K. And the reason why this is a little hack is because with all components, we have a main component, which is indicated by these four purple diamonds. And if I make a copy, an instance component, which is indicated by the single hollow purple diamond. And we know that an instance component cannot be fully edited in structure because it always needs to copy this main component. So if I add a order layout to an instance, I don't need to use that group command. So let's just go and do that. I'm going to add order layout and we can have, we have it at spacing between items 10, which doesn't really matter because we only have one item and we have padding at 10. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some strokes. So zooming into our new frame with the auto layout and we know auto layout is on because in our properties panel we can see the properties so we're going to add a stroke 
and let me just zoom in a bit more. I'm going to make it 10 so we can just see it. Let me just show you the three types of strokes that we can make. We can have it placed in the center, on the inside, or the outside. So with center, this is the type that we don't want to use at all because our control handle, which is this blue border, is in the center of the stroke, which doesn't really help us. We can have it on the inside, which is our preferred placement. The reason being the control handles is now on the outside of the stroke, which means we can always control the size of our element quite easily. But the danger we have is the stroke will overlap with our element. And finally, we have outside. Let me just shrink this in a bit. And we can see now our control handles are on the inside and our stroke goes out which is not great either because for example, if you want to align a element, so let's say I have a rectangle here and I want this outline of the stroke to match this rectangle, I can't really do that because there's no guides. It's trying to find the control handle with this red line. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to make that focus state for this button. So we'll bring it back on the inside and the only concern is to make sure that our stroke is not overlapping our element. So we're gonna make it that nice blue color. And we can see how much space we have to play with by looking at our order layout. In our padding section, we have 10. So we're just gonna make sure that our stroke width is less than 10. And we know that with our focus state elements, we want to have a nice little gap between our blue ring. So with 10 as a padding, I'm just going to make it half. So we have a five pixel ring and a five pixel gap. And that is our first design. So now let's go ahead and create our second one. So I'm just going to copy and paste this again. And we're going to do the same trick. We're going to add auto layout. So I'm just going to right click add auto layout. And this time I want to add, let's say we want to add three strokes. So the first stroke we want to make five, then 10, then 15. So what we can do is we can add a stroke and we want it to be inside always. So the first one we want it to be five. So we'll make the stroke five and we'll just make the padding five. So we can just make it this nice yellow color. And now we want to add our second stroke. So what we have to do is click on this frame or this auto layout and we'll add another auto layout. And the way that we can do that is we can just group the selection and add another auto layout. What we want to do is add the padding of 10 now. And for the stroke, we can add 10. So let's make it this reddish orange color. And one more time, we'll just group the selection again and add auto layout. So that's our third one. What we're going to do, add the stroke again. And this one, I said 15 pixels. And we'll make the padding 15. So before I make the padding 15, you can see it's below it, so you can't really see it. But once I move it out, that's the stroke. Um, so I'm just going to make this the purple. So this seems kind of crazy and I can open it like this. You can see all the auto layout groups that I've made. And here is our instance component, which is the green. So essentially all I've done is I've grouped and made an auto layout for each one. And just to reiterate, try to always use the inside type so that the control handles are always on the outside. Now I wanted to just talk about four tips when dealing with multiple strokes. The first one is learning how to copy and paste auto layout properties. So it's similar to copying any other properties. The way that we do that is using the shortcut. If you don't know it, we can go command forward slash, which is for any quick actions. And we can just type in copy properties. So we can see the shortcut is Option Command C and to paste is 
Option Command V. That's for pasting properties. So we can just go to our order layout and we select it through selecting this title, Option Command C. So now that when we have any other element, we can just add an order layout or we can select a order layout and go Option Command V. And we can do that for any shape. So if we have an ellipse, go Option Command V. It also works. For my second tip, I want to talk about how to maintain curve radiuses. So you can see with a circle, it made that blue ring, which is not what we want it to do. So let's just actually, let's just copy this button component over here. And let's say that this button component has a corner radius of 20. We want our blue stroke to follow this radius, but we need to work out what it needs to be because if we make it 20 as well, it doesn't look correct. You can see how it gets thicker on the corner. And the way that we do that is just simple math. So we can just see the corner raises is 20. And then when we go to our auto layout, we need to see what our padding is. So it's 10. So we just have to add 10. So we can just go 20 plus 10. And now it follows that same curvature. So if I was to make it a full stroke, so we have a padding of 10, I'm going to make the width 10. You can see it's now following this stroke. So for tip number three, it's about moving our multiple stroke components. So we know that with auto layout and frames, when we hover over our auto layout and we click, we actually click the elements within the auto layout. As I mentioned before, to actually select the auto layout, you have to select on the title. So this is a bit annoying because when you want to move it, let's say we want to move this element with this multiple stroke. When we click and drag, we actually just move it out of the auto layout, which is not what we want. And sometimes it's a bit hard to always select on the title. So the easiest workaround, it's not the best, but we should try grouping our elements that have multiple strokes by using the shortcut or just right click group selection. So now when we move it, we just always move it in one piece. The final thing I want to teach is how to shrink our frames so that we can work with alignments better. So what I mean is, let me just draw a rectangle, even though I could have just drawn a frame. Let's say we have two buttons. Um, let me just draw it a bit bigger. So you can see in Figma, it's trying to align to this blue stroke, which is not necessarily what we want. We want it to align to this green, which is the extent of our button. So in our design, it might look something like this. So we need to work out a way to align these two elements. And obviously we can just zoom in and have a look. So it's about there. But what we can do instead is actually just shrink our control handles. So the best thing about auto layouts um, in the way that we've set it up is that the padding is consistent all the way around. So what we can do is we can look at our resizing. Uh, let me just make it into a frame first, actually. So with this auto layout, layout selected, we're going to right click frame selection. And we want our auto layout. So let me just expand our layers panel. So for our auto layout, we want it to be in the center. And the reason being is the padding that we've added is the same all the way around. So we know that the frame doesn't necessarily have to align with the extents of our content. So what we can actually do is shrink our frame. So now that we've made it center center, when we shrink our frame on one corner, it will shrink all four corners the same way. So I'm just going to drag it down. And essentially I'm shrinking the frame to align with the green. And now you can see we can get it all the way around. There we have it. So now we have this frame that even though we have content outside of the frame, the control handles align to our element, which is really handy 
because now we can align to other components more easily. So that's just another handy tool if you want to go the extra mile. That's all I have for you for this video. Hopefully you've learned how to create multiple strokes and I know it's a kind of annoying workaround, but that's all we have to deal with until Figma designs us the ability to edit multiple strokes at a time. That's all for now. Hope you stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.